Are you in the service of police? Uh, I'm no longer in the service of police. Yes. When did you cease serving the police force? Mm, I seized it in July this year. You retired, resigned, or sacked? I resigned. So you resigned voluntarily? Yeah, I resigned voluntarily. You are in retirement? Yeah. Okay. You are no longer in public service? Uh, I resigned from the Uganda Police Force and uh, I'm in the public service, but not in the Uganda Police. What is your current occupation? Uh, I'm a programs officer. of uh, uh, the Parliamentary Service Commission, Department of Corporate Planning Strategy. Hmm? Department of Corporate Planning Strategy, Parliamentary uh, Service Commission. Department of Corporate... Corporate? Planning Strategy. Planning Strategy. So in nutshell, you were appointed by public service? Yes, Council. Okay. So, why are you still in service of police at Parliament here? What was your full, full responsibility? Uh, I was the Division of Police Commander, uh, Parliamentary Police. The? Division of Police Commander, Parliamentary Police. And uh, at the time you were requested to come before this committee, was the request about you coming in your capacity division commander or in any other different capacity? I have, uh, I have two invitations. One was um, on 7th December 2022, uh, where I was invited uh, to this committee. I was invited in the capacity of the Division of Police Commander. Mm -hmm. And then I also have another invitation uh, dated the 8th of November 2023 where I was invited as the former Division of Police Commander when the incident happened. Let's start with the first one of 7th December as DPC. The request was to do what? What was the request all about? What were you requested to do? Uh, the request was uh, uh, to come out with the footage of the chambers and lobbies on the afternoon of Tuesday, 29th November 2023. I mean 2022, sorry. That was all? Yes, please and also inviting me to appear before the committee uh, on, on, the, on the 29th 
no, on the 13th of December 2022 uh, to relay that footage, which was under request. Let me be specific. <clears throat> Were you in any way requested to investigate the conduct of the Honorable Zake? Yes. Uh, the request was uh, to provide the CCTV footage of the chamber and lobbies in the afternoon of Tuesday, 29th November 2022, and of particular interest, the sections where the Honorable Francis Zake was making a submission on the floor of the House. Put it, I want to put it differently. Were you in any way requested to investigate conduct or misconduct on the part of the Honorable Zake? I was requested to provide a, a CCTV footage. My, yes or no? When, when you are uh, requested to provide a CCTV footage, it also involves the investigations. Okay. So you conducted investigations against the Honorable Zak? Yes or no? No, I provided the footage. Did you conduct investigations? No, I didn't conduct investigations. You did not. So the footage you presented you have no finding about the conduct of the Honorable Zak. Uh, we have the findings. We have the findings as do you have findings? Let me yes. Ask. Uh, I have the findings on the report. I actually in the form on of the, the conduct of the Honorable Zak. Yeah, in the form of a report. Let me understand you. You've just said you did not conduct investigations. How did you arrive at in findings without investigations? Uh, when you requested to make a CCTV footage, ultimately you come up with a report. And there is no report without findings. the letter of seven.
Are you done with the course examination? We have only 30 minutes for this process and go some other business. I was still receiving instructions. You only have 30 minutes for this process and that we have agreed since yesterday. But I would request this honorable committee to appreciate that this is a matter which has taken close to a year close to a year, since November last year. And it touches on the rights of a particular member. We request we be given ample time. So if we are strict on time, 30 minutes to hand a matter which has been before the committee for the last one year, I think it's not fair if we are stampeded like that. Uh, uh, uh. Well, we are uncomfortable with the words you are using. Nobody is stampeding you. That's number one. Number two, you remember this matter came last week, and we gave us the, uh, the timelines. And we thought within one week you should be ready. Second, as you said, this matter has been with you for over a year. And all the documents which we have were submitted to you all of them, and you've been having them for a year. So for you to not say you are being stampeded, I think you are unfair, you are not correct, and we would like to take exception to that. Yes, Mr. Gaba. Can you confirm that the request made to you had no specific allegation against the Honorable Zaki? Yeah, the, the request which was made uh, was talking about. Uh, when the Honorable Francis Zake was making a submission on the floor of the house on the 29th of November, 2022. We would like to follow this conversation, the request which was made in the letters, the invitations. The invitation of seven. Just read it, then we know what you're talking about. Mr. Gaba, read the invitations, both of them. <clears throat> Uh, invitation for a meeting with a committee on rules, privileges, and display. That is a letter dated when? Uh, 7th of December 2022. Yes. Addressed to me. Uh, the committee on rules, privileges, and discipline is inquiring into a matter of the alleged misconduct and misbehavior by Honorable Francis Zake, MP Mitiana Municipality, during the plenary sitting of Tuesday, 29th November 2022. 
which was referred to it by the House. The committee has deemed it necessary to review the CCTV footages of the chamber and the lobbies in the afternoon of Tuesday, 29th November 2022. Of particular interest are the sections where the Honorable Francis Zake was making a submission on the floor of the House. I have been directed by the committee to invite you for a meeting on Tuesday, 13th December 2022-11 in the committee room 408, 4th floor, North Wing, Parliament Buildings, during which you will be required to present the above-mentioned CCTV footages and to aid the committee in scrutinizing the same. Please note that the Honorable Zaki Francis has been invited for a meeting and he has a right to cross-examine you on the matter if he so wishes. For any further inquiries on the matter, please contact the undersigned on 0782-551330. Uh, signed by Agatha Akankunda for Kilakt Parliament. Read the second one. <clears throat> the second one is dated 8th November 2023. The reference. Uh, AB 199, stroke 288, stroke 01. Read. Uh, Mr. Gabba Stephen, Parliament of Uganda, Parliamentary Buildings, uh, meeting with the Committee on Rules, Privileges, and Discipline on the inquiry into allegations of misconduct and misbehavior against Honorable Francis Zake, MP Mikiana Municipality. The Committee on Rules, Privileges, and Discipline held a meeting today, the Wednesday, 8th of November 2023, where it interacted with witnesses in the above captioned matter. During the meeting, the, meet, uh, the committee directed that you appear before it to respond to any inquiries that Honorable Francis Dake may raise on your submission to the committee in the meeting of Tuesday, 13th December 2022 as then the Division Police Command of Parliamentary Police Division. This therefore is to invite you to appear before the committee on Thursday 9th November 2023 at 11 in training suit, room 413D, 4th floor, North Wing, Parliamentary Buildings. Uh, for any further clarification on the matter, please contact the undersigned on 7825513. Uh, signed Agatha Kampunda for Kilakt Parliament. Those are the invitations I have, Honorable Chair. So, the specific question relating to those invitations How did you understand the task charged on you by the committee in regards to the misconduct and misbehavior? I based myself. I based myself on uh, on uh, the letter dated 7 December 2022, uh, where the committee deemed it necessary to review the CCTV footages of the chamber and rubies in the afternoon of Tuesday, 29th November, 2022 and of particular interest, the sections where the Honorable Francis Zake was making a submission on the floor house. So I base myself on, on that aspect of that date uh, to inform my uh, CCTV, CCTV technicians to come up with the CCTV footage. When did you get the CCTV footage from your team? Uh, I got uh, I got the CCTV footage on the 12th of December uh, 2022. It was your first time to also scrutinize to watch it. Yeah, that well, I, uh, yeah, that day I, I watched it uh, after receiving it from my uh, technocrats. You did the analysis yourself. I didn't do the analysis myself. So it is you my watched technicians it. Uh, who did the analysis. So when you watched it, what did you do yourself? 
control. Uh, when I watched it, I informed my CCTV uh, analysts uh, to prepare themselves to, pre I mean, to present it on the date on which it was requested. So you, on your own, you did not make any analysis. Of course, I, I read the report, but of course, uh, no, I'm, I'm not saying on 12th when you watched it, you did not yourself make any analysis. But, but uh, I'm also, not. I'm not an analysis. Because you were given the report, the analysis report, a year ago, dated 12th of December, and the signature is there. And this report, you have it. And it's the only one which the committee has. Yes, yes Chair, we are dealing, we know what Kutos did. But we are dealing with this particular witness before we come to Kutos. We are coming to Kutos. You see, if you are talking about document analysis, and the one the committee has is this one. We don't want anything which is outside, which we don't have. What we have is this one, and we forwarded it to you. Chair, I was winding up with this particular witness because Ali Aroni said he made a report. He said he himself was tasked to do investigations. We are trying to interrogate him on the investigations he conducted himself. Okay, Parasit. You said you made a report. It is my analysis. Did you make a report yourself? I didn't make a report. The report was made by my analyst and then presented to me. Did you make a report of any of your findings as the person was tasked with investigations? No, I didn't make a report. You have no report. The report I have here okay. is presented to me it's okay. as, as a tasking officer. So actually, let me sum it, sum it up this way. All you did is to receive a report from Kutosi, and for you as the DPC, you do not conduct any investigation. As simple as that. I acted as a tasking officer. You cannot task uh, an officer to do a task on your behalf, but then again you go about uh, investigating it. Okay, fine. You task and then you receive the feedback. All right, Chair, let's deal with the, the person who was tasked. He, this was just a tasking officer. What the tasking officer goes, this report which you presented, Kutos Paul, is he officer? Yes, all right, Baba. Round. I am asking Mr. Gaba. Sorry? Is Mr. Kutos Paul your officer? Yeah, he's one of my police officers. He's one of the police officers? Yes, sir. Whom does he report to? Whom did he report to? Whom was he reporting to at that time? Uh, he reports to the in charge uh, CCTV, and then the in charge CCTV is here, reports to me. Okay. So you are the overall police commander? Yes, Honorable. Of the parliamentary force? Yes, Honorable. Who is the in charge? If I may get the particulars here. Mr. Muanika Nicholas, SP Muanika Nicholas. Muanika. <coughs> Did you go through this report? Yeah, I went through it. This report is addressed to who? The report is addressed to me as the Division Police Commander. It is addressed to you? Yes, Honorable. Okay. So, when you are tasking this police officer, uh, Mr. Kutosi, uh, Paul, what was the nature of your task? I didn't uh, task. I didn't task Mr. Kutosi Paul. As I said, there is an in charge of that uh, facility, so I I tasked the in charge and. Uh, on my letter I received from the clerk, I have a minute saying the in charge data center. 
provide the footage as per this request and inform the analysts to appear before the committee on the 13th of December 2022 uh, to present the same report. Then I sign. Say it again for record. To the in charge uh, data center, provide the footage as per this request and inform the analysts to appear before the committee on the 13th of December 2022 to present the same footage. Then I sign. Colleagues, do you have any question for the Mr. Gaba? Next, thank you for coming, Mr. Gaba. Welcome, Honorable. Sorry? Most welcome. No, just one second. Uh, I see you with the microphone. Uh, Mr. Gaba uh, said that uh, he's having a current position. He's doing now. I would love to say, to confirm that with an ID, the current ID he's having now. Do you have one? An identification? I haven't got one yet. So, how are we going to... I wanted an ID, an identification. Okay, we shall, for your investigative body, we shall find that the parliamentary commission is our commission. We shall find out whether Mr. Gaba is a... a Server to not. That's not a big issue. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Mr. Kutos. Uh, I'm an IT person. I hold a degree in computer science from Indonesia University. Huh? I hold a degree in computer science from Indonesia University. From? Indonesia University. <coughs> and also I hold a diploma in computer science. I also hold a diploma in computer science from the same university. A degree from DJ in computer science, when was it awarded to you? It was the 2000, I mean 2015. 20? 2015. 2015. Yes. And the diploma? 2013. 2013. 20? 13. 13. Yes. Those are your qualifications. I also have certificates in regard to CCTV video analytics. I also have a certificate in video analytics. Video? Analytics. From, from Uptech Computer School. From? Uptech Computer School. <coughs> Uptech is from which country? It's from India. Hmm? India. But I've written here. Which, which year did you get this? It was in 20, 2021, sorry. Huh? 2021. 2021. Yes. I also have a video analytics certificate from, um, from uh, Uganda Police Innovation Center. Hmm? IT Innovation Center from Uganda Police Uganda. IT Innovation Center. Yeah, from Police. Okay. Yeah. Which year is that? Still 
And for how long have you been in the service of police? 25 years. Hmm? 25 years. 25 years. And your current assignment? Currently, I'm a CCTV analyst with the parliament, parliament, police, police here at parliament. Since when? I came here in 2012, 2022. 2022. What is your rank in police? A corporal? Yes. With that kind of education you are claiming to possess. Yeah, but uh, counsel, how is that relevant, this proceedings? Uh, the, the professional qualification has given to you and so on. Please. You are overruled on that question. Yes, Corporal Kutos. Yes, Honorable. Who is your immediate supervisor? My immediate supervisor currently is Mr. Monica Nicholas. Yes? Is Mr. Monica Nicholas, who is currently here with me. Monica Nicholas. In regards to this particular matter, do you recall the date you did the examination, the analysis of the CCTV? Yes, Council. Uh, I received this letter on 9th, uh, December 2022. It was addressed to me by my initiate. Hmm? It was addressed to me by my initials uh, to handle a prepare presentation to the CCTV footage on the particular case, on that particular case. Uh, so when did you conduct the analysis? I conducted this, it was on 10th, 10th of December 2022. 10th December 2022. Why didn't you make a report? To, because from the record here, I see you did not make any report to your immediate supervisor. Why? This letter. Why didn't you make one to your supervisor? Chair, this letter was addressed from the DPC to my immediate supervisor. And uh, here, even I put a minute when you read the, my, my report, I've referenced this letter. To the minute, as I said, uh, Chair, I would like, I would request you to read the background of my letter. Anyway, let me take you specifically to the issues you raised in your report. Uh, we, we don't want a hanging record, because we are going to base our decision on some of these records. And as I have said before, this is... Oh. So... If he has mentioned something and he hangs, it doesn't make sense to us. Uh, Chair, I was complying with your guidance earlier on that I don't turn it into a dialogue. So if, okay. he, if he makes a vague answer, I leave it at that. I remember that was the guidance. Yes, but eventually, mm -hmm. of course, we shall seek more clarification because we don't want a vagueness also. As, as the people responsible for this process. But you leave, it, you leave it as vague as that. Proceed with your question. Because earlier on I was guided to make submissions on those vague answers. Uh, 
Copro Kutos. Yes, sir. On this analysis you made, how many were you? A uh, chair, in the analysis, we have a team of analysts. <clears throat> so in this team, we all sit. We retrieve the footage as a team, we analyze it and come up with the report. And our report actually, these are findings of our intern. So I was not alone, I sat with my team. As you see, chair, when you look at this letter, it's uh, address to council me. Council says don't volunteer answers, just answer the question. Yes. So how many way are you? I have a team of three other analysts. Who and who? I have Isiko Muhammad. I have Isiko Muhammad. I have Florence Akum. And also have Naruto Christian. So the opinion you rendered in this particular report was collective. Chair, I was the lead analyst in this case. So the objective I gave. You have answered the question. Well, correct. Chair, I would wish to interrogate the issue further. Was it a collective opinion? It was independent and personal opinion. Wonderful. Independent and personal opinion. Now, going by your independent and personal opinion, I'll take you to page two. Page two. Page two. Through interviews with just read five one. Read that read it loud. Five one. Five one says uh, through interviews with some police officers and other staff, our technical team established that the Honorable Zake was the one seen in the footage, seemingly exhibiting violent contact of the floor parliament. Do you own that as a personal opinion or it's an opinion of your team? It's a personal opinion. Personal opinion, wonderful. Two and related to that particular matter. Honorable Bozake was the one seen in the footage seemingly exhibiting violent conduct. Seemingly. Are you certain or you have doubts? Hmm. True to what? It is true. He was seemingly exhibiting violent conduct. What do you mean seemingly? Appearing. Appearing. From that particular footage you watched, where he was seemingly exhibiting violent conduct. And from the video footage you were watching, was the speaker in the chair? The speaker was in the chair. The speaker was in the chair. And you have that footage where you were 
asserting that he was seemingly exhibiting violent conduct with the speaker in the chair. Do you have it? Yes. Chair, we have the footage. You have yes, it? Yes, I did. We played it. And you didn't have it. Where you are seeing both the speaker and the in the chair and the and Honorable Zake seemingly making violent. Chair, this report does not talk about the speaker. It talks about the particular person who was actually seemingly exhibiting the violence. So in this case, we are zeroing on Honorable Zake to see his conduct in the plenary. So it does not look at the speaker, his actions, but we only looked at the particular person, that is Honorable Zake. Okay, we shall break it down further. Those seeming violent, that seeming violent conduct, what was he exactly doing, which you are terming as by being seemingly violent? What was he doing? Chair, <coughs> Chair, I would like to tell you, this committee, that uh, in our profession, we really look at the footing. There are two kinds of types of footing. The one which has, actually has body, body language, and the one which is actually having right, the spoken or written language. But for this case, I was looking at the one with the body language. Actually, his movement clearly shows that the Honorable Zake was violent. Did he beat up the speaker? Yes or no? Chair, allow me to explain to the Honorable. I mean, the Honorable. No, I want to take you one by one. Did he beat up the speaker? I want to <coughs> explain to Honorable. Uh -huh. Chair, if I may be allowed, because I'm going to break down these particular acts. Did he beat up? I want these questions. I want yes or no. Did he beat up the speaker? No. Did he insult the speaker? We did not hear the words. This was not verbal. Did he insult the speaker? Yes. No. It was not verbal, so we did not hear the words. Did he beat up any member? What we saw? Did he beat up any member? No. Did he hold any weapon? No. Did he in any way kick anything? Yes. He kicked what? He actually was slapping the rostrum. Slapping? Slapping several times. No, I'm talking about kicking. Did he kick? He did not kick. He, you are saying he slapped? The rostrum. He slap is seen slapping the rostrum. Exactly. You saw that in the video. It was there. Can we be taken there to the video? We watch that particular part, Chair. Yes.
the guy doesn't want to look at the minutes. But the rate now it's a moving number. There was no heating of the rust bar, but you are saying slap. You get the video off, let's continue with the question. Heating the rust bar. With violence. So you can slap without eating. It's <laughs> eight. Okay. Let, let, let's go to the conclusion. On page five. Let's go to the conclusion. You are using it. There are a couple of questions here. You were saying your team, our technical team in compliance with other technical, ethical, and procedural requirements concluded that the act of, still I would ask you that Honorable Zake was violent. What do you understand by the word violence? Chair, this is how I understand violence from the English dictionary. Violence means what? Means a uh, hostile behavior. When someone has exhibits a hostile behavior, it uh, that amounts to violence. So in this. So in other words, the Honorable Zaki was hostile. He had a hostile behavior, chair. Okay. Hostile against who? Chair. He was hostile to the house. Oh, hostile to the house. Somebody is hostile in this room. Who is having a phone? Please don't exhibit hostile behavior. <laughs> Did did he exhibit any intent to hurt anyone? Chair, as early on I said. Did he exhibit? Honorable uh, Parker, I want to explain. Yes. Because if I just put the answer, I don't understand. Allow me to explain, Chair. Uh, you see, he was using physical force. By using physical force to hit the rostrum, even his uh, visual appearance, he was aggressive. Because we don't look at the voice. Mr. Chair, you allow me to tell this to Mr. Paul. We are using all the images to describe what is happening. So by fighting and looking at this... No, let me cut you short. He was aggressive against who? Hitting the rostrum. He was aggressive. By hitting the rostrum, swinging hands, even he, we, he, even there, when you look at the footing, his fellow honorables came to come him. So when you look at that, we saw that the honorables are came with the Okay, fine. I want to conclude my questions on this by looking at the caveat you put there in that conclusion. Look at that caveat. Read it for him. That our technical team in compliance with the other technical, ethical, and procedural requirements concluded that the act of Honorable Zaka was violent. But, this is the caveat I wanted to read for you. Further analysis by interviewing the person that were near him to get any information that can enhance the footage in order to form a complete narrative of a violent misconduct. Wonderful. So your opinion was inconclusive. Without interviewing the people who were near him, Chair. you cannot conclusively make a finding that actually was violent. Chair, this allow me to explain, Mr. Uh, 
Honorable Wabas, explain to the committee. And the committee, actually, Mr. Wabas and the committee. Uh, we did not comprehensively conclude that the Honorable Zaki was violent. Reason, it needs a corporate, I mean, collective work, uh, evidence. We all wanted to get a person who was in the house. Because here we say that Zaki was violent but required further analysis by interviewing a person that were near him to get information. So we needed the inquire from the person who was near him, like those honorables who come to him, who come to him, and also the sergeant at arms, because he also went under. It's okay. We do what you are supposed to do. This committee is going to have opportunity to talk to people who are in the chambers. So just do what you, are, what you did. The rest you leave it to us. We did not conclusively conclude that Honorable Zake was violent unless other people around him were interviewed. Did you interview any of the people as police? As police, did you interview anyone? Sir, this regard, as I said, I'm a professional city analyst. I don't do CIG work. Mine is IT. So I do not interview anybody in this particular case. And this is your personal opinion. I already said it. Already. Okay. No further question. What do you mean? And the reason why I'm asking is this report a personal opinion or a police report? It is a, a, a CCTV report. Yeah? It's a CCTV is report. Is it an official report? Exactly. So, what do you mean when you say personal? When the report you are referring to is an official report? I, I, I was meaning I'm an analyst. And when I'm doing an analysis, I base on the video content. So, I mean that this report was independent and we base on the video content of the, the video. The word content. you are using seems to be contradicting the document we have. This document is not a personal document. I see it clearly. It is Uganda Parliamentary Police Division report. Two, I also see you, your signature. You, you signed it as a CCTV analyst. So how can you call this a personal report? I thought, Chair, that would be the judgment of this committee. You, you, you want us to leave the witness with the hanging questions and vagueness, and the one party takes advantage of it? Oh, come on. That is the we, don't, we, we don't do this, please. We are investigating to come to the crux of the matter. And if anybody has made a mistake here, we, we, and it can be corrected, we do it. Because we are finding out the truth. And I have to repeat what I said. This is not a case like in a court of law, so versus so, and listening. No. We are investigating. What was referred to us is find out what exactly happened. Did it amount to the breach of our rules, of our code of ethics? And, and, and understand that. So we are going to probe, we are going to call a witness to find out exactly what happened. And I repeat this, we are going to call witnesses. We are going to ask questions to find out the truth. And we will not just run away from the truth. We can't do that. I mean, we will be failing in our duty. And we can't do that. Ours is to find out what exactly happened. Colleagues, we are tasked to find out what exactly happened. And we are inquiring. We are not sitting here as a criminal court. I repeat, we are not seated here as a criminal court where you have to wait for the prosecutor and the defense make submission and you base on it. Can you answer the question, please? Chair, yes, I, just I'm begging for your indulgence. Please go ahead. Chair. No, chair, chair. no, no let's hear from Mr. Rupert. Yes. Your persistently said this is not an investigation. 
That it is not an investigation? No, no rather against the Honorable Zake. That what? That it's not an investigation against the Honorable Zake. That's how we understood you, Chair. Please, 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 please. Hold on, Rukwaku. Then why are we here? What? Why, why did you come here in the first place? We, we, we understood you to say... Just a minute. Do you have communication from us? Miss, your client has communication from this committee. In writing. What did it say? Chair, when we raised this issue at the beginning, to break it down the particulars of what is being investigated, because if you are investigating an individual, there must be specific allegations and there must no, be no, particular... No, 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 yes, I can, I can. The rules pro here provide that when the chair is speaking, you listen to him. And that's what the rules say. We said, and I repeat, Onobozake is not here as an accused in, in terms of criminal cases. What was referred to us is whether his conduct can come out to breach of the rules of procedure and our code of conduct. The first thing we must do is to establish the facts of what exactly happened. And there is no prosecutor who is prosecuting Honorable Zake here. We are trying to find out what, what happened. And if we find out that nothing breached the rules, we shall report that after there was no rule breach, by the Honorable Zake. The subject is actually Honorable Zake. That's why we asked him at the beginning, in writing, you have right even to cross-examine people who are testifying here. Two, you even have a right to have a lawyer, because that's your constitutional right. And I think that clearly settles this issue. May I come in just? For clarity purposes. I think, Chair. I'm seeking for clarification Mommy, further. Okay, can you let us. Uh, I, I have understood. Excuse. You. I, Let's have a colleague first. Yes, we emphasize that these are not criminal proceedings. I didn't hear you say that these are not investigations against you. You just said these are not criminal proceedings where we expect a charge sheet, we expect a set prosecutor, we expect this and the other. In my view, we are proceeding well. This is an inquiry. And we have to get all the information, all the clarifications, okay? There is nothing like fighting here. And as a committee, we have got a right chair, give something to the career to get the information, like what you're saying. For instance, the witness is saying that uh, our team established this when you look at the report. And then at the same time, he's saying personal findings. Now, as a committee, I think we need information from him to clarify, was this done as a team, or you did this as an individual? I, I think uh, I don't see any prejudice in that particular question. Anyway, I, I think we have made that clear. Mm -hmm. It is trite right law that proceedings before parliament are not judicial proceedings. Please. These are not judicial proceedings. I don't know how many times I repeat this. We are a quasi-judicial administrative, you know, organ of parliament. The only thing we have to do is to make sure that the tenets of the constitution of fair, of fair hearing are adhered to, to the latter. And that we have done. And that we will always do. That we have done. And that we will always do. Tenets of the Constitution and tenets of a fair hearing. However, however, for us to leave things hanging, we can't do that. I mean, we can't waste public resources, sit here, and say, well, we didn't find that out because it was not said. That's why all the witnesses coming, I told you, are our witnesses. Can you answer the question, sir? Yes, Your Chair. Chair, this is a, it was a collective uh, report. Answer the question. The question is, you talked about personal. That's what is confusing us. You said personal. It's a teamwork. Personal. 
what do you mean by personal when you have given an official report and you have signed it in the official capacity? Chair, <coughs> why I said this person, I took uh, responsibility as being the head analyst to sign that document. After findings, I own it as head analyst. That's what you mean by personal? Exactly. That you took responsibility? Exactly. Colleagues, do you have any other question? Yes. Uh, thank you, Chair. In your submission, when they asked you the date of the footage, you said um, this letter was addressed to me and you quoted the date. And when we were asked another question, Referring to the same letter, you said this letter was addressed to my in charge. Was that letter addressed to two people? Sir, this letter was addressed to my in charge. But the in charge also instructs me to carry on with the one, with the technical work. So it was addressed from DPC mm -hmm. to my in charge, and also it instructed me to carry on the technical work. Can you get us those instructions? Where is that letter? And those instructions? Chairs, he forwards it to you for clarity. You have a letter addressed to you, you have instructions on the letter addressed to you. If you are reading the same letter. The letter was addressed to the PC as a divisional commander, but you also have the head CCTV. So it was written from TPC to head CCTV. Then the head CCTV instructs the technical team, which is me and my group. So as head analyst, I took responsibility to receive the letter from what my... What the instructions you have? Exactly. What do they say? The instruction says, in charge, CCTV analyst, in charge, CCTV analyst, handle and prepare presentation of the CCTV footage on this case. So, okay. for clarity, there is a note written to address to you on the letter that was addressed to the in charge. It has a second minute. A minute. Exactly. Okay. Read it. The second minute. The second minute says. Uh, in charge CCTV analysts handle and prepare a presentation of the CCTV footage on this case. No, that's what you were saying. And the third, the third minute, I received it. Hold it here. It's understood, Chair, because he was referring to, as if there were several letters he was talking about. Dated 7th December 2022. And uh, referenced AB199, stock 288, stock 01. Yes. Yes. And this is the letter which they have, you have been cross examined on. Exactly. The committee has been requested the ne next week to be excluded because I intend to be out of the control of official duties. I'm heading a delegation to Netherlands about. The particular project in Kampala here. Delegation in the KCCA, National Physical Planning Board, and a couple of others to interface with the Norwegian government of a reconstruction of the audit tax park. And it's going to take five days. That was my request in earlier communication chair. you but we need a small a small meeting and it will take not more than five minutes. Actually parliamentary staff don't come back. You might come and exhibit you might even exhibit violent conduct here. Before the chair makes some of these decisions we need to do a little bit of consultation such that the entire committee is on the same page. We had thought we would adjourn this matter to Monday, but we have reviewed our record.
the indeed the road mayor wrote and I look at that letter. Sorry, not the road mayor. Did we say FDC president wrote? <laughs> <laughs> uh, indeed, the council for the Honorable Zake wrote uh, to us, and this this how he concludes the letter. The time we wanted to to, to have these hearings begin. Therefore. I request that the committee proceedings intended for 25th October 2023 be adjourned to another day. We suggest any day from the 28th October to the 12th November or from the 18th November to the 29th. He brought it to our attention that between the 12th of uh, November to the 18th will not be available. And we never reply to this letter meaning we actually accepted this request. So he brought it to our attention that he will not be around. We therefore agree as a committee that the request be granted because he had brought it to our attention in time. We will therefore be adjourning that particular matter to the 18th. I'm sorry, Chair, it's the day I'm returning. And I already have my ticket for that day. Oh, as you say, we are not going to stampede anybody. We are going always to accommodate anybody. Can we say the 19th? Will you give you the 20th? Okay. There is some, there is some, I understand there is a disease for people who travel in planes called jet lag. Especially if they travel economy. <laughs> because the 19th I wanted to adjourn this matter to is actually a Sunday. I wanted us to come on a Sunday. Anyway, that joke aside, we'll adjourn it to the 20th. I'm sure the, the, the lawyer for the Honorable Zake would have returned, had enough rest, and we'll proceed. Thereafter, we'll be doing it every other day until we conclude this matter. Okay? So between the 20th to the 29th, we think both matters should be concluded. Both of them. Both of them. So, thank you very much. This matter, therefore, will be adjourned to the 20th of November. And on that 20th, uh, we are going to hear... I think we, we, we have a set of witnesses we are going to invite, and those are the people who are in the chambers during the time under probe. We shall start with the technical staff. One, the sergeant at arms. We always have two clerks on t at table. The two clerks at table. And then we have what we call doorkeepers, staff that are within the chambers when that incident happened. Those may be two, two, one, five, five witnesses. Uh, and I, I think thereafter, we don't think we will need any other witness after that. But in a case, because of that we need other, we will always let you know. But as of now, we intend to call five other witnesses, and they are sergeant at arms, the two clerk at table, and then the two doorkeepers who are st technical staff within the chambers. Uh, I'll ask the clerk to communicate that also in writing to Honorable Zakas through his lawyers by close of business today. But at least we brought it to the attention. That matter is there for... Before you, before you take a leave of the matter, Chair, you are working out a program for the witnesses. Yes. 
and earlier alone from your guidance, you indicated these are witnesses of the committee, and indeed we entirely agree. But uh, they are those we deem necessary to be here. And your indication is as if once these ones are, it will be on the discretion of the committee to decide whether they are necessary or not. But for us, there, we see there are some witnesses who are left out, which we consider to be very, very important for the justice of this matter to be done. Uh, so, you, you reply to the committee. First of all, if you think there is a witness whom you can carry here, bring it to our attention. If you think it's necessary, mm -hmm. but if you think it is a witness you would want through us, you have to apply to us, mm -hmm. and then we see he, the relevance of that witness. No, no, ch 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 we are following your ruling and guidance that this is an inquiry. Yes. And uh, you said it's not adversarial in nature. No prosecution, no defense. So I wouldn't like to see a situation where witnesses are segmented, that these are our witnesses and these are witnesses of the other side. I said all witnesses can only come here when we've agreed and sanctioned, all of them, because they are ours. If you have any witness you have in mind whom you think is what? Is relevant. You will apply to us. Then we can we will take a decision whether that witness is necessary or not. It's the reason the chair wanted to move this committee through you at this stage that certain witnesses whom we consider to be vital for this case be also summoned. <coughs> and this is why at this stage, so that we don't. We open. We open. You, you let us know and we take a decision. We wanted to do it now, Chair. Go ahead. Oh, Professor, thank you. Chair, uh, from the testimony of Kutos, he has indicated that the people who were around the Honorable Zaki need to be interviewed. And the police indicated they never interviewed them. They never interrogated them. And from their, they, that report of Kutos, their names that are specifically mentioned. They mention a number of MPs, including the Honorable Nabeshi, and a couple of others who are surrounding the Honorable Zaki. We consider them to be relevant, Chair, those MPs. Because even some of those names are appearing in this report. Honorable Nabeshi specifically appears here, and some others. So we can generate the list of those who are close to him so that the investigation is conclusive. Kutos said their investigation was not conclusive. So that is number one, the cassette number one. Two, Chair, we have read the statement of the speaker over and over again, preceding the directive that the matter be forwarded to the committee. And Chair, when you look at the statement of the speaker here, it's our considered opinion. There are a couple of things which need to be substantiated by the speaker here. One, Chair, it's not that clear from the statement of the speaker. What is it that the Honorable Zake did which required him to be subjected to a disciplinary action? From the statement it is here, it is detailed. The speaker states, a number, a, I write say, a couple of things here in this statement, which may be subjected to investigation without us knowing. And in the interest, like you, you have kept on emphasizing, and I must applaud you, Chair, the tenets of human rights, rather of the right to a fair hearing, I'm sorry. You have emphasized the tenets of the right to a fair hearing. And I remember alluded to that fact in the ruling of the Honorable Zake in the Constitutional Court, where the lead judgment cited Article 28, the one to get to know exactly the gist of the investigations and the allegations leveled against them. Now, in this particular one, 
There are a couple of things the speaker is talking about. That the Honorable Zaki, for example, missed 10 sittings without his permission. Is it a matter of investigation so that he prepares a defense? Because he says the commitment to that, I started it without Honorable Zaki. Honorable Zaki has not been in this house for over 10 sittings. He has not been here without my permission. If I go on the answer, I can prove it on the record. But I have never spoken about him because he's a brother. You leave him as a colleague. Maybe he's, he's blah, blah. So is that part of the acts of misconduct for the Honorable Zaki missing 10 sittings? Do you, to, when you read that, yes. do you think that's an issue which was referred here? He read all this and said, on that note, I forward you to the committee for investigation, for disciplinary our, our action. Our understanding is different. It no. is, our understanding, because of reading the answer and the evidence we are having is different. It is purely the conduct, the physical conduct of Honorable Zak at that time is what is an issue, only. Yeah, now, now in this statement, the physical conduct is not there in the statement of the speaker. And that would be important. He may not have used the word physical conduct, yes. but just read the entire reference. But that would be later. No, che let, 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 no, no that's, that would be later, please. That would be later. One, we are going to have a set of witnesses whom we have told you, and it's all about the conduct of the Honorable Zak. And the communication to Honorable Zak was about that conduct. That's because we wrote to him. That's what we are inquiring about. But let me say one thing, and I've emphasized this, that this is not a court proceeding, but analogous, as we always say. There's this thing called the concept of court, for which I'm sure you are well versed with. I don't know whether that's a matter which requires judgeship, a concept of court. I don't know whether that's a matter which requires a presiding judicial officer to come and give evidence that you have a judge who will come and is someone to give evidence, or prosecutors and so on. Or if something happens in the eye of the court, what happens? But anyway, that's for your food of thought. Think about it. It I is in our mind. I was finishing the prayer. No, speech. if you are finishing the prayer, have that in mind. Because you know what, what we are doing is not reinventing the wheel. If there is a breach, a conduct which breaches rules and procedure in the eyes of a judge. Do, do we have particulars? Do you have prosecutors? And, and there are many instances and authorities and precedents about conduct breaching the rules, physical conduct breaching the rules in the presence of a presiding officer or a judicial officer. But that's not for a conversation for now. But as you come back, have that in mind with what you have raised. <clears throat> Having said that. I didn't finish the chair. Please, I was, please finish. I was finishing here, Chair, on the issue of conduct or misconduct. Again, Chair, like we had earlier alone indicated, and we want to emphasize this, why we want, would like the speaker to be called. The conduct is talking about here. That point has been made. No, the, the drama is talking about a drama. That if you want a drama, go to we have national theater here. If you, you want pictures to be taken so that you, you use them for campaigns. So is this the conduct is complaining about? So we really want to get to understand and understand as chair. If one says you people you have conducted yourself in an unbecoming manner. You tell me you have done A, B, C, D. And the speaker did not say it here, and that's why you would like to have no, the speaker no, 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 no. as a witness. Le, 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 le. Okay, let, let's put it this way. Uh, let, let's put it this way. We are in, inquiring about a particular conduct. Whether this conduct amounted to the breach of our code of conduct and our rules of procedure. And that we have said it from the beginning, we shall say it again now, and we shall say it again tomorrow. So let us have 
this inquiry. And if we find out that there is a possible breach of the code of conduct, we are going to put it to Honorable Zake. And it will have opportunity to respond. I repeat, if we find that there is a possible breach of our code of conduct, with the evidence which will have been adduced to this committee in his presence, we are going to put it to him. Because at the end of the day, Honorable Zake has not had his opportunity to explain his side of the story to us. But what is he going to explain until we get the evidence and put it to him? And that's what we are going to do. We are going to have that evidence, put it to him. The good news is, Mr. Lukwa, that actually the evidence which we have, you have been imparted to it as it has been presented. So there would be an evidence coming outside which you have not seen and even had an opportunity to cross-examine on. So we are going to put it to him and seek his side of the story or his response. And, and if you think the evidence of the speaker was relevant and we didn't, you have an opportunity to say, by the way, this is what it is. As of now, we think we are going to have the technical people who are in the chambers. And that we have told you who. The clerk to the table, the sergeant at arms, and what we call doorkeepers, those guys who put on white like a doves within the chambers. That's the set of witnesses we need. On that point, that matter is adjourned. Can we now move to the second matter, please? Fourth of October. A matter arose in the house and it was raised by the Honorable Chinyamatama. I hope I pronounced the name correctly. If I don't, please. Uh, but I can say Honorable Subi. Subi is very easy. And why Subi is very easy, I know Mr. Rias Rukwago, the Honorable Rias Rukwago. At one time, he was a member of a group called Subi. So. <laughs> So I, I think let's say oh, the Honorable Suvi, now that you agree on Honorable Lukwago, it is easy to pronounce them. Uh, a matter was referred to us by the speaker. It caused a little bit of acrimony in the house. And uh, when you look at page 10, triple five of the answer, this is what the speaker says. Honorable colleagues, I refer this matter to the Committee on Rules, Privileges, and Discipline as per Rule 175 to report back within 45. And the video will be played as evidence in the committee. I think it would be a middle ground because there are people who have not watched it and I would not have, I would not want it, I would not want to give it prime time. It was really bad. I have ruled on the matter. Honorable Chinyamatama, I'm sorry for that. So this matter was referred to us. Uh, we don't want to go into the background of it, because that's what we are going to investigate. But I don't know, Clark, have you brought that uh, tape? It is there? So for purposes of the record, the Honorable Chinyamatama, you were uh, welcome. To, to this committee, we'd like you to lay on table that video and also, because you laid it on table, but whether that video is the one we are going to watch it together, is the one you are complaining about. Uh, of course, we have written to the Honorable Zake, forwarded the tape, and the Hansard. Is there any other material which we have? And then we have gone ahead to order for the transcribing and, tra and translation because the tape, I understand, is in Uganda. So we refer to the Makere University to have it translated into English, which is the language of parliament, but also to get people like me who don't know Uganda to understand what is going on. Uh, for purpose of the record, 
I see you came with some people. Can we know who they are? Uh, thank you, Honorable Chair. I was actually almost raising on a procedural matter because I wanted you to know the team I've come with. Uh, and I, I request these are uh, my councils and I request that they introduce themselves. For yeah. the I am Edgar Tavaro. I'm appearing jointly with Kenneth Chiparu and Mr. Nobat Nyakuni. The Tavaro I knew was a judge of the... Is He's, he's happily enjoying his retirement. Okay. <laughs> I happen to be advocate tower. Okay. Because yeah. <laughs> you would might mistake and write just tower. Sometimes it's happened. <laughs> For the record, I stand guided. Okay. So we jointly represent uh, the Honorable Chiman. Chiman. Okay, let Chiman. the record capture yeah. such. Uh, the Honorable Rukwago. I don't know. Is no, the, no, no, the Honorable Rukwago. The Honorable Zake. Can you purposes of the record. We are going through some formalities, but it's for purposes of our record. Honorable Chair, I earlier introduced my lawyers. Uh, These other lawyers were not here. So let's now have one record. Oh, all yeah. right. Yeah. Mr. Chair, I introduce His Worship, the Lord Mayor of Kampala, uh, Honorable Elias Rukwago, as my lawyer. I thank you. Can the lawyer go on record, please? Lukwa Gerias is my name, Chair, and I have instructions to handle the matter. You are not alone here with the colleagues. That's, that's why, actually. He is my assistant in the same law firm. The name, the name. Is Sas Mavin, my assistant. Sas? Sas Mavin. Sas Mavin. Yes, same law firm. Okay. So, I think we are going to start like this. One, we want to view the tape together, confirm whether that's the tape the Honorable Chinya Matama was talking about. And can you confirm, Honorable Zake, whether you received the tape? Honorable Zake? Honorable Zake, did you receive that tape which they are complaining about, sent by Parliament to you? Yeah, we received it. You received it. Uh, did you receive the translation? It was as well received. Sorry? It was received. It was also received. Okay. Uh, <coughs> did you receive the translation? Now I will be talking to your lawyers. Did you, your client receive the translation she from did, us? She did receive it. She did? She did. Okay. Let's have the, the, the tape read first. Pro procedurally, I beg your indulgence. 